Dave here, how are you? Have you got any floors at your place that are concrete, especially in the garage, and every time you sweep or try and clean it up, it leaves a powdery finish, and sometimes you think, this is worse than when I first started sweeping it. I've got that situation out of my garage out there, and I decided to do something about it. Stick with me and I'll show you what I did. So the first thing to do is to clean the garage out. Now I had a whole lot of things there that were heavy. There's stuff there that has been stored for another day. Well, the other day just came and it's throw out day. So a lot of the stuff into the back of the car, get rid of it, take it up to St. Vincent de Paul's, or if it's not good enough, off to the tip. I thought it'd be a good idea while I was doing all this to put some wheels under my Dexian racking at the same time. The aim was put everything out on the driveway while I grind the floor and paint it. But it rained and it started raining and it kept raining. So I had to bring everything into the workshop. And it's amazing how many people were very happy to see all this mess in here. I wasn't, but it's better than it all being out there getting wet. And it, it was hard work getting in here. There, there's some heavy stuff. To save a couple of dollars on the job, I decided to go down and pick the grinder up myself. I could have had the hire people deliver it here, but you know, small money, so I thought, mm, I'll go and pick it up. So I brought in my little trailer, and isn't it fantastic? This is a folding trailer. Brought it in, and open her up, and you can see a couple of bolts, holds it down, drop the sides on, put a couple of screws in so they don't fall out while I'm driving around, and then off I go down to the hire place. Uh, get down there, and one of the guys down there gives me a hand to throw a couple of the machines in, tie them all down, bring them back, and then the trick is get the machines out on your own at the other end. This grinder is a fair weight. I don't know its weight, but you know that you're picking the thing up uh, probably 80 plus kilos, I'm not sure. Now the setup that I hired was a industrial vac, the 300 millimeter diameter grinder, and also a separator. Now they all work in conjunction with each other. The dust from the grinder goes through a separator, it's like a cyclone, drops it into the bottom of the bucket in a plastic bag, the remainder goes to the dust extractor. Now I wore my helmet because, you know, whilst the vacuum is working, it's still not picking everything up, so I wanted to make sure that I was being looked after. Uh, and it worked quite well. Once I got around the perimeter, I then needed to make sure that I was leveling as I was going. So I was doing this kind of a motion with the grinder where I was doing arcs as I was traveling forwards. And it was something, you get the hang of it pretty quick. And it was doing a fantastic job. Once I'd finished grinding the whole floor, I hooked the vacuum up and I went round the whole floor to clean up anything that the machine didn't collect as it was, as it was grinding. This enabled me to see if there were any holes, not a, no, you know, a big hole, but depressions that the grinder hadn't taken the floor down to yet. Now the idea is to get it down close. I didn't have to get rid of all the depressions because I would have been there for a month of Sundays. So I wanted to get as much as I could done. But there's a waste of time me grinding all the slab a second time where maybe only half of it needed to be done. So I went around a second time and then vacuumed it out and then I brought the hose in. I'm going to paint it so I needed to make sure there was no fine dust left. After I'd hosed everything out and it dried a little bit, I could see what was happening. What revealed itself to me then, after everything was clean, was there was algae growing along the southern side of the concrete. Now that, for the southern hemisphere, gets no sun. In the northern hemisphere, you would be getting the same kind of thing on the north side of your building. There was all this algae there, so I got the pressure cleaner out, cleaned all that algae off, and then I thought I'd do any of the depressions as well, that the parts that the grinder hadn't actually got and I wasn't going to get down to the base, I got the pressure cleaner out and cleaned those areas as well. Then it was, you know, where do you stop? I thought I'd do a little bit of the driveway because I didn't want to destroy the paint by cleaning the driveway, you know, a few days later. I know what it was going to be like, but then you have to find where do I stop? So I found some lines, edges of concrete. Uh, there was a brick section across the drive. I stopped there. Because it's a garage, I've used oil in there and I've had a couple of oil spills. I then got some detergent and a scrubbing brush and I scrubbed these areas to release the oil and then hit it with the pressure cleaner again. It did an amazing job. The reason I'm doing this is because I want the paint to bond to the concrete. I don't want anything repelling it. Do I paint it now or do I paint it in a few days? 
We're expecting some warmer weather further down the track, so I thought, let's leave it. I'll epoxy the depressions and any holes and cracks during the week, and then I'll sand those off with the Rotex, and then I'll paint it in the warmer weather next weekend, hopefully. Thanks for watching. Click the thumbs up if you think I'm worth it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of what I'm up to. It doesn't cost you anything. Keep on coming back, and I shall see you next time.